Hi. Okay, I'm back with a requested video for how I make my glue book. My glue book is something that I use to make ephemera, tags, the base, the basis for tags, journaling cards, and it's just a book where I glue in all my scrap papers. And then when I'm working on a journal, because I glue them on pages by predominantly colors, I can kind of look and see what color the, the journal's gonna be, and I may choose to use those pages. And I'll show you that in a minute. Anyways, I got this idea from Gail Agostinelli. She has a video um, on YouTube about how, where she got it from, but I don't remember her reference. So it's not my original idea, but it certainly was a great idea. Thank you, Gail, for sharing that with everybody. Um, but it's, I have got a huge box full of scraps. I had more, but since she showed us how to do this, I've been able to spend some time when I'm not working specifically on a journal or on a piece of art. Um, I do this as kind of a stress relief. It's, you know, to glue in paper. So kind of let me move along and show you uh, how this works. So this is an old math book. And when you open it up, it's just an old math book. Um, but I go through my scraps of paper and I separate them by color. And I put them in baggies. So this is a baggie of purple scraps. It really varies by, um, you know, there's a lot of different things in here. Small pieces, large pieces, blue, purples. And what happens is when I find a piece of paper, sometimes there's multiple colors. Like, here's a good example. This has multiple colors on it. So you kind of have to make a decision. Do you want to put it with yellows, purples, blues, pinks? You have to make a decision. So what I do is when I touch a piece of paper, I make that decision right away and I put it in that pile. Now that's not saying it's gonna stay there, but it is a good way for me to sort and not have to put stuff aside to make another decision about. So I have baggies with colors, basically purples, uh, blues, greens, purple, red, pink, and yellow. Those are the basics. And then I have obviously neutrals and I'll show you some of the neutrals in the book. But I'm working on a journal right now that's got blues and purples. And so I wanted to make some purple tags. So that's why I thought I would go ahead and show you some of the purples. So basically my glue book, um, these are all purple scraps in here. And I just flip a page and they're all glued in, just pieces that are glued in with a glue stick. And I must have been working on my purple bag because these are a couple purple pages, okay? And they do vary. And this is more of a lavender page. And then we're getting into the greens. But these are all scraps. And I don't do the opposite side because those, I save my coffee dyed scraps like these, and I will um, glue them on to cover that side uh, when I decide to make my tags or journal cards. So I'm gonna quick flip right through here and show you some. I do leave some extra pages blank in between sometimes. But again, these are all just scraps. And this is a neutral page, so it's black. These, these are like cream, black, brown, beige, white, gray, more neutral colors. This is actually a paper I designed for a digital kit that I made. And this here, I think there was part of it. Oh, and this these and this are uh, part of a painting I created a couple years ago, and I actually printed it out and used parts of it for a journal, and these were the parts that were left, so I put them in my glue book. 
we're getting into there's a blue page and sometimes I leave extra pages in between so if I want to do more blues they'd be together it's purple purple so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do um, one page then we'll cut it we'll cut out a page and I'll show you how we um, do the tags and the cards probably won't embellish them in this video but I'll show you how I cut them out um, so let's get started. I'm going to have a seat and we'll just get gluing. So what I'm going to do first is just pull out all my scraps here, just so you can kind of see what I have. Some are large pieces, some are smaller pieces. This is actually a piece of deli paper and it's kind of large and I want to split it up. So I will break it up. And I apologize if my table's kind of moving. I can't tell um, in the video, but my house is under renovation. So I have a folding table that I'm working on until my little craft area gets finished. We've been in renovation since November. So if you can tell, like right now I'm crafting in my living room, which is not ideal certainly not ideal for making videos. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't like this brown on here, so I'm just gonna rip that off. It was an edging on a paper. Now, it could end up getting covered up, but I don't know. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use this piece, and I'm going to put this one aside for either a blue or green page. And I think I might do the same with this. Put this part aside to add to my green scraps, and I'll use this as my purple. And I'm just not so sure that this table's not moving all over, but it's hard for me to tell, so. Again, I apologize if it is. Um, that kind of looks the same. Let's pick something. Actually, these look like, these are scraps from the, act, the journals that I'm creating right now, so these will be good to use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rip those. Uh, these are a digital design by Louise Heinzel, and I'm using her digitals for the next journal I'm making that I'm working on now. So that'll be good to have um, part of these in there. What's good about um, having a glue book like this is, like I said in the beginning, it is very much so a stress reliever. Um, when I'm not um, actively involved in creating a journal or I'm you know, in between or I'm not uh, making a painting or an illustration, it, it's, an, it's a way to be creative um, without having to commit to something right away. So. Um, and then when you do work on a journal, you've got all these pages already to make your cards or, and or tags. Oh, I don't want to cover that up too much. Let's maybe, oh, let's put it right here. Okay. And this actually was a paper that I didn't like. 
I wasn't crazy over it. So I ended up just getting uh, paints out and I did purples and blue on top of it. I think it was like a gray blue, kind of a gray blue green color and it had birds on it or something. And I wasn't, I just wasn't crazy over it. It was some old scrapbooking paper. So I went ahead and covered it up with paint. Let's find something that will. Oh, there's another one I just painted. <laughs> and I think that would be good. I could put it right there. Just put a piece right there to cover that little area. And then you can use large pieces, small pieces, because remember, this whole thing is going to get cut up into tags or um, cards. So I'll, um, I think we'll cut this page up too and use it. That way you can see it from start to finish, pretty much how I do it. See, and a couple things down here that I kind of like it. Let's see what we got. And this is another one of the, that's part of this page. I did the same thing. I just painted. I think I'm going to... right there also when I make tags or journal cards or whatever I um, and I make them out of these collage pages the glue pages um, there's no way that a glue stick is gonna hold a tag together in its forever life <laughs> it's just not uh, glue stick just isn't sturdy enough. So, um, what do we got here? so I end up sewing the tag. I either sew or I use glitter glue because it's a strong holding glue. And um, so I'm okay with, I'm okay with, um, if there's edges that are loose or something, because I know that I'm gonna sew it or uh, do a more permanent glue once I make the tags or the journal cards. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done filling this page up. I'm just trying to fill in all the white spaces. Well, this is pretty. This is a lot of really nice purples in there. Maybe I'll take a piece of this. Put it right there. Perfect. Again, these are all either scraps from projects that I've used or old scrapbooking paper that I just wasn't crazy over the uh, papers. But anyway, so there's a page, and what I would do normally would be I would just flip this over and continue on to the next page and and just glue more of this into another purple page. Um, you can also, if you don't have a whole lot of scraps, it's okay to just start a page, even if you don't finish it. Um, and that way your scraps are in this book and not in a baggie like these. <laughs> 
So let's do this. Um, let me move these aside. Okay, so here's our purple page. And then what I would do is, because all these pages are connected in, I would just tear the page out like this, okay? And put your book aside. Get my cutter up here. Okay, so first, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straighten this edge right here because I don't have paper all the way out to the edge. So I'm gonna make it a straight edge here. And I think my cutter needs a new blade. So let's see if we can get it cut. Yes, we did, okay. And then I also know that my, my preference is a two and three quarter inch tag or three inch. In this case, if I do two and three quarter inch, two and three quarter inch, I still have a good size here for another. So let me see what I got going this way. Two and three quarter. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. What I'm trying to do is get the most I can out of this. So let's do two and three quarter. Well, actually, I have some two and three quarters and I'll show you in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and do three inch. <clears throat> so we're doing three inch, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is take this and split it in half. So it's right now about 10 and three quarters. So I need five and a quarter, five and three eighths, I think I need. So five and one, two, three eighths. And that should make them both about the same size. Not exactly, maybe. So then I have two for tags. And then this, See how big this is. Well, this is almost five and three eighths right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another three inch tag because this is about five and three eighths. So let's make another three inch tag. Again, I apologize if my table's moving all over the place. And then this, I think I'm gonna divide into a, to journal cards. So. I'm gonna just look at basically, it's not quite eight inches, so I'm gonna make them not quite four inches. Let's see, it's seven and seven eighths. So I need seven, three eighths, three six, seven and seven sixteenths, seven, seven, so three and seven sixteenths I need. So three, and who the heck knows what that 7 16ths is? Let's just mark it. <laughs> I can't do that in my head. So that's about 5, Does that look like the middle? Let me. I'm just going to do this. How many people do this to find the middle? That's how we're gonna find it. So, okay. All right. And then this I'm gonna trim off. Get the white off of it right here. Hold this up there and. Okay. trim this one. Okay, so that is what we got out of this piece of blue book page. We got three size for tags, 
and two journal cards. So what I would do next is I would go ahead and cut my tag tops. I think I'll do it this way. I'll cut these. Then I will use this. It's a little different size, but I think that'll be okay. But I'm gonna do do is move this up a little bit there. This is not an exact science either. Okay. So now I have three tags that are three inches by five and three eighths or something. So they're really good sized tags. Okay. And then I have two journal cards, which I'll probably round the corners and then uh, embellish. So that's what I got out of one of the glue pages. That's pretty good, huh? So basically I will back these with coffee dyed papers. So I would take these and glue them onto the coffee dyed papers as such and then cut them out and then they have backs on them so they're not the bath the math background so let's go ahead and do that and that way they're all ready for us and then i'll show you these other ones that i made oh and i was going to show maybe i'll wait on this one and i'll show you um how i use these scraps so basically, you can use all your coffee dyed scraps to back your cards. So I would just um, glue that on. I'm not sure. Um, glue another one. I just overlap them just a little bit. And then this really isn't big enough for this just, just now, so I'm going to go ahead just and use these other scraps here just so we can get one covered so I can show you. I'm looking for maybe a skinnier piece, but that looks like it's too skinny, so maybe I'll use this one. Yep. So I know I have to go to there. You don't realize sometimes how every little piece makes a difference sometimes. You can really use your scraps for a lot so okay and then I just turn it over to the front and I will trim that off and basically that gives us a tag and it's covered and I will sew them, and that's what I'm gonna show you what I've already done. I uh, created a video the other day and thought it would work, and the whole table was just shaking all over the place, so I thought I better redo it. 
do it. So let me show you. These are the ones I did the other day. And so they've got the coffee paper and I sewed around them. Oh, these are the two cards I got. So I did these as well. And this has like one big piece of coffee stain and some scraps. So these are journaling cards and these are three tags that I got out of those pages. And then I went ahead and embellished them with some book page, uh, some flowers. This is actually out of the kit that I'm doing a journal for Louise. And uh, this as well, it's part of her digital kit. And I just added some coffee dyed paper and some words from a book page um, and pieces from her kit on there. And I'll use those to embellish what I'm working on. But I did wanna just show you how I make the, the glue pages out of a math book and you can make your own. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like that video uh, thank you, Gail, for your inspiration for the book. Um, that's Gail Agustinelli. And thank you all for watching. Bye.